Hi, this is Russ Bucher from Control My Icon, and in this video we're going to take a look at what is new in version 4.0 versus the old version 3.0. Now it's been almost a year since we had a new version out, and we have a lot of new features and bug fixes in this, and we're just going to step through the different parts of this, and uh, we'll see what we have. Now the most important thing here for a lot of people is that it has D4 and D800 and D800E support. So now you can select these and connect to them. And those cameras have some interesting new capabilities. Um, as far as Control My Nikon is concerned, its biggest ability is to do tethered bulb captures. The other cameras could not do that. So that's going to uh, make it interesting for doing uh, long exposures, especially for astrophotography. I'm just going to connect to my D7000. I'm running a Windows 7 64-bit system here. Now another addition we have here is support for continuous shooting. And uh, all you need to do on your camera is to set your dial uh, to the continuous mode. In some cameras you can go high speed continuous and some low speed continuous. Then you need to set the number of pictures that you like and uh, then take your shot. It is going to take those pictures very quickly. I'll just give one a try here. I'll set my mode to uh, high speed. And we'll take five shots. I'm going to bring up the new image browser as well. And we're going to save this into the C images folder. And we'll just use the main counter. And there's our continuous shots. Now this new image browser is interesting in that uh, it has a lot of new features. The old image browser just wasn't very good. And uh, this one allows you thumbnail views, view metadata and histogram information and to see this, uh, these shots full view as well. Now we also have the exposure meter. And if you were to change the exposure or the lighting conditions, you'll see that is moving. It's moving a little bit now. I'm just going to put my hand in front of the lens here and you'll see that it, uh, it changes. Now we also have tagging support. So within your images, you can include uh, some tags that are going to go into the keyword section of the metadata. So on this one we might go um, uh, whatever this is I'm taking a picture of. It's a radiometer that I use for uh, calibrating the software. And we also have extensive new support for new folder naming and file naming customizations and we've really expanded this we are now able to completely customize folder names, including customization based on scanned data for high volume photographers. So that allows you to use a barcode scanner and to, uh, to scan in a barcode, which is related to some other data, and that data is injected into folder or file names or the metadata. So very useful for commercial shoots. We're gonna take a look at that in a moment. We also have multi-language support now let's go up to the tools menu here. Now this is new in this version and what this allows us to do is to create additional languages. Uh, out of the box here version 4.0 is only going to have the English language but it's going to have the ability to add additional languages and those will be added as time goes on. Uh, some people have expressed interest in doing some conversions uh, into their native language and um, we may be able to include some of that uh, in the software in the future. But if you like to do your own kind of translations, you can just add your own language here, make any translation you like. You could save it to Excel, re-import it, and it makes it quite easy. The software also supports multi-CPU systems. And uh, so now when we're doing a lot of image processing here, like we are in the image browser, it'll use different threading models. Uh, so it'll ensure that more than one CPU is used at a time uh, if more than one CPU exists. We also have support for Xerine Stacker watch folders. This is used for focus stacking and Xerine Stacker is an extremely good focus stacking application. It allows you to take a series of images of varying depth of field and combine them for a large depth of field image. And now you can use Xerine Stacker's watch folder functionality within Control My Icon and to enable you just put a check mark here. 
And we also have a news tab, and uh, this will show you anything new that's happening uh, in the Control My Icon world, and it'll pop up a message to let you know, for example, that there's a new version or maybe some new tutorial videos out there. We've added better error reporting capabilities to Control My Icon so that you can optionally send a bug report to Control My Icon anytime that a bug occurs. Let's take a look at that batch shooting we we're talking about earlier, and uh, that exists up here in these two windows. There's the batch shooting window and the batch metadata window. And what these allow you to do is to enter a batch ID, and I'm going to try a batch ID of 10,000. Press the activate button. This identifier that you just entered can look up the identifier in some data, such as I have down here, and bring in additional data. Now that data can then be bound into file names. So as an example here, maybe I want a, uh, a file name that is based on this batch ID. Now I'm just going to delete these files here. And when I take a shot, you can see that it has the batch ID at the beginning plus a counter. Take another shot and another. And it also has barcode support. And I have a barcode scanner installed here. And so you can scan. It'll actually scan into this field for your batch ID. And then you can start shooting there. And you'll see that the file name has changed a little bit and a new counter has started. So this information plus any of this extra information can be embedded within your folder names or file names or even as metadata. And if we look down here in our browser, these images we just captured, we look at the metadata and we've inserted this data uh, into the IPTC fields of title, headline, description, job ID, and also as keywords. And you could see it right here. And if you were to view this, uh, you could see that uh, this information is here as well. So by using the batch shooting and batch metadata functionality within Control My Nikon, you can easily organize your images for future searches. Okay, let's take a look at some other features. Now we're looking a little bit at the uh, image browser here, and basically the image browser allows you to, to browse through the various folders, and it creates thumbnails and preview images. Preview image you can rotate as you need it. You can also do reverse histogram tracking, so you can just hold your mouse over part of the image and it shows you here what the exposure is under the mouse. And here you can see it's very dark, here it's very bright. Now you can also just click and drag the mouse here on an area of the histogram and it will show you what area in the image corresponds to that part of the selected histograms. So if I wanted to know what does this peak represent? Well, you could see it right there. And you can just hold your mouse over here and it'll change the color of it just for the selection, just in case the selection is the same color as the actual image color. So it makes it easier to see. Now, right now we're looking at the histogram in the luminance mode, but you can look at it in the red, green, and blue channels as well. Now, as we look at these images here, in the image browser, you can look at it in expanded mode, and you can also look at it in full screen mode. The image browser, in a way that is very similar to the new live view functionality, has a settings bar. And in this settings bar, you can do things like turn off the metadata, or you could change the opacity of it so it isn't quite as obtrusive, or maybe even change the color of that. You can apply an overlay to your image. Now you can just take any PNG image and overlay it using this functionality onto your image that you're viewing here in the image browser. And that allows you to create customized compositional overlays uh, with guides and margins and so on. And this makes it very easy for you to uh, compose your images. Now we also have inner and outer exposure markers. An outer exposure marker allows you to specify that you want to see the parts of your image highlighted 
that are below and above a particular exposure value. So if I wanted to see things that are almost uh, too underexposed and things that are pretty well blown out, you can do that. So here I've set it to show me anything that is less than 10 and greater than 245. You can see this white area here is, is very bright and it's highlighted in red. But you could change its highlight color if you like. And uh, the dark areas as well. So, but you could tighten that up. You could say, oh, only show me things that are within five of the maximums. Now the inner exposure works in a very similar manner in that when you click on enabled here, it shows you anything in between a minimum and maximum value. So if you're taking a shot, for example, of, of a person and you want to ensure that their face uh, exposure is between a certain range, you can do that. So here, as an example, I want to set the range, say, between 123 and uh, 172. So the areas that are in that range are going to be highlighted in whatever color you set here. And we also have a histogram in that anything that is directly underneath your cursor is shown on the histogram as a marker. So you can see these vertical lines that are going to show up here as I move my mouse. And so you can explore it. You can look over here and say, okay, well that's where that bright area is. And if I go to a darker area here, you can see where that is as well. So it just lets you poke around your image a little bit and better understand its exposure. And I'm just going to turn off this overlay. Now you also have adjustable grids. So you just turn your grid on. And you can set its opacity. You can set how many lines there are. And the color of the lines. And with the image you can rotate it to whatever orientation that you like. You can also crop it. So this is useful if you're planning to do any video work or planning to do any post-processing cropping. Now this is really not cropping the image, but it's only the cropping the presentation or the display of the image. You could turn this image to grayscale, and this one's almost gray already. I'm just going to uh, flip to a, a different image. The reason you might want to do that is when you go to your exposure markers, you can just uh, more easily see where the marker is. You can also move this image around and you can zoom into it as well. And you can pop it right back into the fit for window. And you can change the background color. In this case, I have it set uh, to be transparent. Well, you could set it to whatever is, is comfortable. And, and this background color will take effect as soon as you go to another image. You can hide the settings by just clicking on Settings. And I'm going to go back there and turn some things off. Go to the histogram, turn that off. Turn off my grayscale. So that's basically the new image browser. Works very well with Control Mind Icon. It's really being tuned to work with Control Mind Icon, so it's very fast. As soon as an image is taken, it's uh, immediately displayed in the browser. So the next thing we'll take a look at is Live View, and this really represents the, the biggest change within Control Mind Icon. A lot of people now are using Live View to do their shoots, especially commercial shots. And it's nice to have that larger image on your screen so you can preview uh, what you're doing. Now, some things that you can do with this is uh, you can expand the screen so you can make it larger. You can make it a lot smaller depending on how much screen real estate you have, maybe on your netbook or your laptop. You can bring up an additional monitor. And this is popular in product shoots or a model shoot where you have someone else uh, there who wants to review or preview what the shot is going to look like before you actually take it but you don't want them looking over your shoulder at your laptop and uh, 
with all the different layers and everything that you have turned on, like grids on Live View. So you could take this and move it to an external monitor and uh, make it full screen if you like, and so they can see what's going on. And you can also record from here. So now, uh, also new in version 4, is when you're done recording, it will transfer the movie back to your computer. And you can zoom in and out using these buttons here. And you can still use autofocus while you're zoomed in and out. And the live view image, just like the image browser, you can drag around the image. You can zoom in on it. Now zooming in on it doesn't do you a lot of good in live view because the Nikon cameras only send you a 640 by 426 image. And so zooming in, uh, this makes it pixelated. In fact, you could see the artifacts here, this fuzziness around the edges that are introduced by the Nikon body when it creates this live view image. And it sends 24 basic JPEGs to you uh, per second. And uh, in an effort to do that, uh, it really cuts down on the quality. And you could see it here. But you could can zoom in that way. Uh, if you really want to zoom in well on this image, uh, just use the real actual camera zoom. And now we're getting in with any without any pixelation at all. And I'll put this back to fitting to the window. And we also have a button here that removes the different layers. And layers are an important concept now within Control My Nikon. And it's really just like Photoshop. Each one of these buttons over here represents a layer. And so here, um, I'm just going to turn all the layers off here first of all. We've got the focus box. Now there's no layers on at all. So we can change the background color. And I'm just going to leave it transparent. Here you can hide the image. And this is very useful if you're using exposure markers. So if I wanted to see uh, exactly where my image is uh, has a correct exposure, you might do this. Sometimes these highlights are difficult to see when overlaid on the image. Let's see, I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. And you can also set some outer exposure markers, and we'll make these red because they're bad, with too high and too low. Now you can bring your image back in a little bit um, by using opacity. So this allows you, before you start taking your shots, to really study the exposure and know what the resulting exposure is going to be like. This is essentially live histogram functionality. And this works on the Nikon D7000, D4, and D800, D800E bodies. Cameras previous to that uh, did not have true live view functionality. You could see a distribution of uh, exposures. The problem with those cameras is as soon as you turn on live view, it enabled auto ISO. And so it doesn't matter what kind of lighting conditions you had, the ISO would be changed to try and get the lighting correct. So you can never tell really what was blown out and uh, not blown out. Okay, I'm just going to turn off these markers and bring my image back. And we can also turn on the focus box and give it an opacity. And I'll keep it cranked up. We also have a focus pad. Now this focus pad allows you to manually adjust the focus. And uh, so what we can do here is I'm going to first of all change the opacity of the pad. And you can change the crossbar color. And now you just take your mouse and you hold the left mouse button down and you drag it. To the left focuses it one way, to the right focuses it another. So every time you move your mouse a little bit to the left or right, it changes the focus. And the amount of change depends on how far up or down your mouse is on this grid. If I'm way up high here, this gives me a step of 13, which is not very much. So if I move my mouse, it's going to change the focus very little. But if I go down here, 
I move my mouse, it changes a lot because I have a step of 490. And you can use this information for focus stacking. Now, Control My Nikon Live View support is only available for those cameras that can support Live View. I'm just going to try and bring this back in focus. It's tough to see from here, so I'm going to just zoom into this. And you can also use keyboard shortcuts in Control My Nikon to help you do very fine-tuned focus adjustments. It's a little bit easier than using the mouse. So I'm going to hide my focus pad and zoom back out. We also have another focusing aid here, which is called Edges. And this is more of a, a video thing. But um, what you can do is you can just set the threshold and bias here. And the computer will attempt to figure out what is currently in focus. Now this is useful if you're doing a focus pull and doing video, where you can just look for these markers to see what is in focus. And I'm just going to manually change the focus to simulate a focus pull. Just watch where these markers go. Goes to the front of the subject. through the mid-range and to the text on the wall in the background. And you can control the opacity of these and the color. And I'll turn them off. So it's just another guide to help you establish a good focus. We can also set an overlay and this is very useful for setting up customized compositional lines. So all you need to do is just set your overlay to a PNG image and it's overlaid on top of this. It needs to be the same dimensions as the live view image. Now the motion trigger functionality is a lot of fun. And this allows you with using live view to detect any motion that your camera sees and respond by triggering the shutter or starting recording of a movie or start a script. So what you can do here is first of all set it up so it can detect motion. We have a bit of motion here so what I'm going to do is reduce my threshold and you can change the dot size and you could change your threshold and dot size to help you eliminate any false positives uh, that might be caused by noise. Okay so we've isolated the movement here pretty good. Now what you can do also is you can change the opacity or you can change the color just to make it a little bit easier to see. Now we need to draw a target so you just click on edit and start drawing. Just left click and when you're done you turn editing off. Anytime when you're editing you can right click to get rid of this. Maybe make a bit of a different target or you can just clear it here. But I'm going to draw my target around this movement here. And what I'd like to do is to be able to trigger the shutter and take a shot anytime I see movement of, let's say, five dots here. So I will tell it to trigger on five dots. And as I move this down, and you can see here, that at setting of 15 it is triggering because at any given time it's seeing at least 15 dots here. So it is triggering but not consistently. I'll bring it down to 5. and 5 works not too bad but it's still occasionally not triggered. So what I can do here is just decrease my dot detection a little bit more and it basically has enough there to trigger. So we've set it here to shoot and I'll set my reset here. We don't want it triggering continuously. We'll say take a shot and uh, then reset it after 10 seconds. So I'll enable it and it takes a shot. And now it's going to wait until it's reset and it'll take another shot. So this can be very useful if you are taking shots of uh, say birds at a feeder and they're a little bit spooked by your presence. You could set up your computer and as soon as it detects motion uh, it will take the shot. You just need to have a clear field of view of it. 
if you have uh, the bird feeder mounted in a way that there's a lot of moving foliage maybe in the wind directly behind it, well, it's going to trigger on the moving foliage instead. So just try to set up your composition that you can isolate that movement. So that's it. That's the new features of Controlman Icon version 4. We hope you enjoy it and give it a download and a try. And if you have any questions, just uh, send us an email. Happy tethering.